Hello, I'm Lindsay Hookway. I'm a paediatric nurse, health visitor, international board certified lactation consultant and gentle sleep coach. And this short presentation should help to give you a few ideas if you find that your nipples hurt while you're breastfeeding. So um, you can teach yourself to be your very own nipple detective. Um, so you may need to get a little obsessive about the shape of your nipples after feeds because that can give you a lot of information about what the problem is um, and why you're so sore. Um, so if you're not sure whether your um, positioning is right with your baby, then have a look at your nipple at the end of a feed or get somebody else to have a little look. Um, what you're looking for is that your nipple should be the same overall shape at the end of the feed as it was at the beginning of the feed. Um, so um, the picture of the breast on the far left of this image um, uh, shows what your nipple should look like at the end of a feed, assuming of course that your nipples stick out. Um, if your nipples are flat and inverted, um, then uh, they should still look the same overall shape at the end of the feed. They might be a little more pulled out than usual, um, but they still should look the same shape all the way round. They might be a little bit pulled out and elongated, that's normal, um, but what we don't want to see is um, either of the two um, shapes on the, um, the middle and the right. So the, um, the breast in the middle image, um, that's kind of what we call a lipstick shape. Um, and uh, the breast at the very end, that's kind of more of a bullet shape. And both of those shapes we see um, when babies have gone onto the breast in a bit more of a mouth to nipple position, um, which tends to mean that the baby doesn't end up with a big mouthful of breast tissue and ends up biting um, on the end of your nipple. Um, which is extremely painful and avoidable. Um, you also don't want to see any cracks or white lines at the end of feeds or whitening of the nipple at the end of feeds. These again show that um, you've got some compression damage and that your baby has been uh, biting down on your nipple rather than having that nipple drawn to the soft part of um, uh, the back of their palate. And if you feel with your own tongue in your mouth um, you should feel at the, the front of your mouth, um, there's the hard palate, and you should feel that hard, um, fairly flat part of your mouth. Um, and then as you allow your tongue to travel further back, um, you should feel almost like a shelf, um, and then your palate um, should slope away steeply upwards, um, and it should feel very, very soft. Um, and that's near where you gag, um, and that's where your nipple needs to be in your baby's mouth. Um, for a pain-free and effective feed. So um, if you're getting um, a lipstick or a bullet-shaped nipple at the end of feeds, the chances are that your baby doesn't have enough breast tissue in their mouth um, to be able to achieve that. So um, just a few um, myths that are still around. Um, extreme soreness is never normal. Um, so no matter what anybody says, um, if you're in toe curling pain or if you want to cry or swear or if you're sweating, um, if you can't speak to anybody, if you can't breathe properly, that's not normal. Um, and pain that is more than just generalised tenderness and sensitivity lasting more than about two weeks is not normal and cracks, blisters and bleeding are never normal. Um, it's also not true that nipples toughen up. Um, they really don't. You can breastfeed for several years um, straight and they do not toughen up. Um, what happens is that your hormone levels um, calm down and you stop feeling quite so sensitive after a few weeks, um, but that doesn't mean you've toughened up and you, um, you very much will still feel damage um, if your baby is poorly attached. Of course, the other thing that happens further on down the line is that you get more proficient at breastfeeding. You and your baby have learned the fine art of, of um, positioning and attachment, and so um, you don't um, experience so much soreness. And um, I still hear that fair-skinned or red-haired women um, have more sensitive nipples, and there's really no evidence for this whatsoever. Um, there is a lot of evidence um, that poor positioning um, causes sore nipples, so that's m your more likely culprit. And women use lots of quite um, 
uh, strong words to describe nipple pain. Um, so you might um, experience burning pain or shooting pain. Lots of women describe a kind of bruised or stabbing feeling. Um, uh, and some women, unfortunately, experience toe curling pain, which, again, as I've said, is never normal. Um, and often, um, especially if the pain lasts after a feed, um, women um, can sometimes think that that's um, a, a fungal infection called candida or thrush. And um, most of the time, that's not what it is. And um, uh, I'll show you with a diagram. So um, you don't need uh, a lesson in anatomy, but it, it is important to know that you have a major nerve supplying sensation and feedback to your nipple and breast. And it runs very superficially from your nipple along the outside of your breast and um, towards your back. Um, and this is a really important nerve. And importantly, it's also a very superficial nerve and it's very easy to damage um, this nerve um, through uh, repeated pore positioning or nipple trauma. And if you've got a wound on your nipple, um, what you can get is some um, nerve damage as well. And this causes stabbing, shooting pain that goes all the way through the breast and um, can persist um, being painful long after the feed has finished. Um, and this sounds very like the sort of pattern of pain um, that also describes thrush, which is why a lot of people get confused. Um, and if your baby is less than four weeks old, uh, or if you've never had a pain-free feed, it's extremely unlikely that it is thrush. Um, uh, and a, a lot of babies have a white tongue, especially if they're under six weeks old, um, because they're always feeding and they often regurgitate a little bit of milk. Um, so looking at your baby's tongue is also not a very good indicator of whether you and your baby have thrush. It's much more likely that you have um, damage to your nipple from poor positioning. So please see somebody who um, is qualified to make a thorough assessment of how breastfeeding is going. So go to one of the many free drop-ins or uh, breastfeeding clinics or baby cafes and please seek support until you get it right. Um, that there is an answer out there. You just need to keep asking. Okay, so what is normal then? Um, well, hormonal sensitivity is common um, and many women describe uh, breast tenderness and nipple sensitivity as one of the first symptoms of pregnancy. And in the same way, when you give birth to your baby, um, those hormones are extremely high and make you feel very sensitive in the early days and weeks. Um, so it is normal to need to concentrate and um, do your breathing a little bit like you did when you were in labour and um, just take some deep breaths and concentrate for 10 or maybe 20 or 30 seconds. Um, it is a very strong and intense pulling sensation that most women simply aren't used to. It, it is uh, an unusual sensation at first. Um, but all of these um, sensations should never be toe curlingly painful and they should not be long lasting. So um, uh, feeling a little bit of a need to take a deep breath and count and um, just shut your eyes for 20 seconds. If that passes, that's, the chances are that's normal, especially if your nipple um, looks the same shape at the end of feeds as it did at the beginning. So that's the, the thing to watch for. So if you are in pain, just go back to basics. So um, uh, the first thing to do is have a look at how um, you're aligning your baby with yourself. Um, and most of us don't have nipples that stick out straight in front of us. So you're going to need um, to work with wherever your breast wants to hang in its natural angle. So if your breast is pointing slightly towards the ground, um, as shown in this picture, which is extremely common for the vast majority of women, um, then you're actually going to need to position your baby so that they're rotated slightly underneath. Um, so the baby on um, the right is in a comfortable position, so they're looking straight up 
at that nipple um, and uh, you can see that they're actually rotated slightly to an angle almost on their back um, but if you contrast that with the baby on the left picture um, they're in kind of more of a, a 90 degree angle to um, the mother um, and that nipple is actually going to go in their baby's mouth in the corner of their mouth um, they're not going to be able to get a big mouthful of breast tissue um, they're probably going to bite down on the nipple through no fault of their own they might fuss or pull off um, they're not going to have an effective feed and you will almost certainly be in pain so the first thing to do is to um, make sure that your baby is aligned with the natural angle of your breast the next thing to do is to make sure that your baby's nose is opposite your nipple um, and lots of people get very very confused about this um, and they may have heard about nose to nipple but when it comes right down to it they um, they might think well my baby doesn't feed out of his nose so why am I positioning my baby with their nose opposite my nipple it doesn't make any sense and um, the reason that we recommend nose to nipple is because um, that very sweet head bobbing reflex that your baby has probably demonstrated for you sort of pecking away on your shoulder this is actually a feeding reflex and when you place your baby with their nose opposite your nipple they can smell the milk and what they do is they start to search for it so um, your baby will tip their head back so you can see in the the middle picture here um, that when your baby um, smells your milk um, he or she is going to tip their head back and then the nipple will actually be just um, just touching or just slightly underneath their top lip um, and of course your breast hasn't moved at all you're just um, uh, you're just allowing your baby to tip their head back and then what you do is you hug your baby in really quickly um, when they've got a big wide open mouth and the chances are if your baby's not opening their mouth wide it's because you've positioned your baby with their mouth right opposite your nipple and if you think about it from your baby's point of view um, they're not going to open their mouth wide if they don't have to and if the nipple is right in front of their mouth then what they're going to do is sort of slurp or hoover in that nipple um, and there's no real need for them to reach up and open their mouth wide so position your baby with their nose opposite your nipple and wait for that head to tip back they will open their mouth wide like a yawn and then you have to move pretty fast sometimes and hug your baby in really close um, and then what you're going to see is that your baby's chin will be deeply buried into your breast and you shouldn't be able to get a finger between your breast and your baby's chin if you're sore the most likely culprit really is poor positioning um, and the other thing to mention is that gravity really isn't on your side in those standard positions with mother sitting up um, holding her baby um, uh, close to her in those cradle hold positions um, if you think about it when you hold your baby like that gravity is actually um, pulling your baby towards the floor and most babies will respond to that by um, clamping down with their gums because they're trying to stay on the breast and most babies also hate that feeling of um, falling um, and so a lot of babies will flail around and they will thrash their arms and legs about um, a lot of babies don't seem to enjoy particularly being held um, uh, so those positions are often not fantastic um, when you're sore and when positioning hasn't been going very well and one of the easiest things to do is just try leaning back because when you lean back um, and you've got a more reclined position gravity will then hug your baby towards you um, and uh, will you'll you'll stop your baby being sort of pulled towards the floor and um, a good rule of thumb is that if you need to hold on to your baby um, so hard that your arm is aching from the weight of your baby then um, gravity is doing way more than it needs to and if you lean back um, you shouldn't have to hold your baby quite so tightly um, with your arms because actually gravity will hug your baby towards you. 
And what you tend to find um, in a laid back position is that your baby's mouth will relax and they will actually um, open their jaws um, wider and their tongue will move down and forward. Um, another strategy is to try lying down because a lot of babies don't particularly enjoy being held and restrained um, while they're breastfeeding um, and so if you try lying down on your side and have your baby on their side um, next to you um, and still remembering to position your baby with their nose opposite your nipple um, you might find that's more comfortable. Um, you could also try just squirming around, just wriggle and um, try um, shifting your position, try moving your baby, perhaps try rotating your baby slightly more on their back. Um, just try and wiggle around and see if you can get yourself more comfortable because sometimes it's just a very small um, tweak that needs to be made to get you pain free. And as a last resort, put your finger in your baby's mouth and take them off and start again. Um, I say that's a last resort because actually when you put your finger in your baby's mouth, um, their reflex is to bite down. And so uh, a lot of times, um, a lot of the damage that you do to your nipple is caused by putting your finger in and um, breaking the seal and taking your baby off because they will bite down even harder. Um, so only do that if you've tried all those other measures and you really can't get yourself comfortable. And a lot of people um, get a bit confused about how a laid back position works. Um, so I made a salt dough model. Um, so this is a laid back position. Um, and what you do is you, um, you get yourself comfortable on your bed. Um, you don't have to be completely lying flat on your back. You can um, be at a 45 degree angle. You can have pillows, you can have cushions, however you need to get yourself comfortable. And you're probably going to need to have your arms um, uh, by your side supporting your baby because they do have a habit of um, head bobbing around and sometimes they can sort of fall off the breast. Um, in their enthusiasm. So you're going to need to use your body to support your baby a little bit. But in these positions, um, this actually gets all of your baby's natural feeding reflexes going. And babies seem to need um, to have pressure on their feet and their chests um, and their chins to be able to locate the breast and instigate their natural feeding behaviours. So in this position, you can see that gravity is going to hug that baby towards his mother and she's not going to need to hold her baby quite so tightly. Um, so that baby can dig his or her little feet in and um, uh, get comfortable and support their own um, body weight. And um, your baby should start to bob their head around and locate the breast all by himself. Um, but in these positions, usually um, it's more comfortable for you and um, uh, you don't need to worry either that this is the only position you'll ever be able to feed in. Quite often people worry that if they can um, manage to um, get a pain-free breastfeed by lying down, um, they, they begin to panic that they'll never be able to go out and feed out and about sitting up. Um, and honestly, don't worry about that. You just need to get pain free and you and your baby are going to practice and learn the art of breastfeeding. And um, once you've practiced it for a few days, you should be able to use those same techniques. Um, nose to nipple, wait for your baby's head to tip back and hug them in close. Um, and that should work in those standard sort of sitting up positions. Uh, but if you're sore and this is the only position you can get comfortable in, then just go with it for a few days. So if you are in pain, um, the number one strategy is to correct the position or lean back, um, uh, trying some reclined positions. Um, and um, the following techniques really are if you've tried all of those things, um, and you still can't get yourself pain free and um, perhaps there isn't a breastfeeding clinic for a few days, um, you could try one of the following strategies. Uh, but please don't try them um, unless you've tried the other strategies first. Um, so one thing that you can do is to do what's called a breast sandwich. 
and um, this is not something you need to do um, unless you are in pain but in the standard sort of cradle hold positions when women support their breast they tend to support their breast um, in a way that doesn't help to maximize breast tissue in their baby's mouth um, and you can see in the, the photo um, at the very top of this slide um, that um, if you have your hand more in a U shape, um, if you've got your baby in a cradle hold position, um, what you're actually going to do is squash your breast into a shape that fits your baby's mouth and maximizes breast tissue in your baby's mouth. Um, this can be a little awkward to achieve because you need to have your hand far enough back um, to allow your baby's um, mouth to get around your um, nipple and areola. Um, but you need to be um, uh, making a distinct enough shape that it does actually help your baby to get a big mouthful of breast tissue. Um, another strategy to try is a nipple flick. Um, and this is similar to the breast sandwich, but with this technique, what you do is you use your thumb to indent um, the outside of your breast. Um, and what that's going to do is flick your nipple outwards um, towards your um, uh, away from your body and again in, in a cradle hold position what that's going to do is um, uh, position your nipple slightly um, towards your baby's nose um, which will help um, your baby to get the nipple to that pain-free spot at the back of um, his or her mouth and finally um, uh, if you are in pain um, and your nipples are sore and you have a wound, um, one good strategy is to use um, a breast shell. Um, and this is a soft silicone inner part with a hole in the middle um, for your nipple to go through. And it's got a hard plastic outer um, uh, shape with air vents um, that allows air to get to your nipple and um, and it, it helps healing because um, there's nothing rubbing on your nipple, which is extremely painful if you've got um, uh, a wound like uh, the image on the right hand side of this slide at the bottom. Um, you certainly wouldn't want to put a breast pad on that wound because every time you take the breast pad out, off, um, you're potentially going to um, cause yourself more pain. So ideally you don't want anything touching um, that sore um, wound on your nipple. So a breast shell can be quite a good tool um, to help you heal. Um, and Lansino is a, a lanolin ointment. Um, it's really best not to use too much of this um, because it won't protect you against um, getting a sore cracked nipple. Um, it will just help the wound to heal more comfortably without forming a scab. Um, so only use it very, very sparingly, just literally on the wound itself. Because um, if you plaster it all around your areola, what you're going to find is that your baby actually can't um, get a big mouthful of breast tissue because it'll be like trying to attach to um, a greased balloon. So just use a very small amount of lansino just on the crack itself. Um, and try to avoid using a breast shell if you're extremely full and engorged because you can um, end up uh, blocking some of the ducts around um, your breast. Um, but this is a, a good strategy if you really are in a lot of pain. So there are a number of um, infant-related problems that might be causing you pain as well. Um, one of these is perhaps having a difficult birth. Um, so that might be a very long um, pushing stage or actually a very short pushing stage um, can sometimes cause babies difficulties with feeding. Sometimes um, it's a problem of fast um, let down at the beginning of the feed and what babies sometimes do very sensibly actually is to bite down to slow the flow of milk so that they don't choke. Um, if that's the problem and you, you notice that your baby pulls off and splutters and chokes and you've got milk spraying everywhere the chances are that's the, the problem um, and so lying down usually helps babies to cope with a fast flow or just allow milk to just spray into a muslin and then put your baby back on once the spraying's finished. 
sometimes the opposite problem will cause um, babies to bite down as well because if the flow from the breast is quite slow um, and that doesn't mean you don't have enough milk it just means that for whatever reason at that time or um, perhaps it's normal for you that if your milk doesn't flow quite so quickly sometimes babies get frustrated and start to pull off or fuss or whinge or sometimes they toss their heads from side to side or hit with their fists we call that breast boxing um, so if those things are happening um, you could try um, doing a breast compression and um, the way you do a breast compression is to get a big handful of breast tissue far enough away from your baby's mouth that you don't um, pop them off the breast and you literally just squeeze and hold if they begin to fuss and that will send a little squirt of milk into your baby's mouth and just remind them that there is milk there they don't need to panic um, and they just need to keep feeding um, or you could try putting them on the other side so sometimes babies just don't want one breast they want the other one for whatever reason um, and and that's fine too Sometimes babies are beginning to teethe, so particularly if your baby is approaching the six month mark, um, uh, teething might start to be a problem as well. And it isn't actually the teeth that cause problems with breastfeeding, um, because if you think about it, when your baby breastfeeds, their tongue is over their lower gum line, um, so uh, your baby physically cannot bite you while he's feeding it simply wouldn't work um, what happens when they're teething is that because their gums can be a little bit sore um, what happens is that their um, suckling techniques change a little bit um, so that they avoid having pressure on those sore gums and sometimes their tongue moves a little bit differently um, because their mouth feels a bit unusual and so one strategy that does sometimes work is to use um, a little silicone toothbrush and um, the picture on the left hand side is a little um, silicone toothbrush with very very um, small soft silicone bristles um, and, and these were designed by um, dentists actually to um, clean babies teeth properly but they, they work brilliantly with some teething gel um, to just um, ease the pressure and the pain on those little gums. So if that's age appropriate for your baby, um, then you could try one of those. Um, and it's extremely common for babies of about um, three to four months onwards to start to get very distracted uh, during breastfeeding. Um, so they, they may be breastfeeding and then the doorbell rings and they pop off um, and they might forget that the nipple is still in their mouth and, and take you with them, um, which is very annoying and, and quite painful. Um, that's quite common. Um, one thing that sometimes works is to try some distraction. So um, the picture on the right hand side uh, is this uh, very colourful and not particularly tasteful um, nursing necklace. And there are lots and lots of these available on the market very cheaply and they're strung with very strong cord, um, so they're yank proof. Um, or you could try um, uh, buying a, a clip-on toy, um, clip it on your bra strap, um, or try tying ribbons to your bra strap, anything for your baby to fiddle with um, and keep their attention um, on feeding while they're at the breast. And then finally, um, some babies do have problems with tongue tie. Now, um, not every baby with a tongue tie um, will have problems breastfeeding um, and sometimes babies can have what looks like a very severe tongue tie um, that really isn't causing them major problems with breastfeeding and other times babies can have a very subtle tongue tie um, that really is causing them a great deal of difficulty with breastfeeding. Um, so the thing to do is to rule out other problems first because we don't want to do procedures on babies unless we really have to. Um, so please see somebody who is skilled at supporting women um, with positioning and attachment of their babies and if you cannot achieve uh, a pain-free feed um, and your baby is found to have a tongue tie um, then there are plenty of um, NHS tongue tie services around um, so speak to your midwife or your health visitor um, and find out if she can refer you into one of those.
I hope that's helped you to um, get a few ideas for how to get yourself pain free if you're sadly experiencing um, pain while breastfeeding. Um, please keep asking because there is always a solution um, to soreness during breastfeeding. Thanks for watching.